All right. So some things that I, you know, it's funny, Hector asked me yesterday, and I was actually doing some videos for something else uh, that I can't really talk about, but, um, and so he asked, because Michelle was on the plane, can you come in and, and do some stuff on QBO? Because typically it's, you know, for this kind of, uh, of an engagement or event, Q Michelle will handle the QBO side, and of course Hector will do the desktop, though he does a lot with QBO as well. So we were thinking, you know, what things do you want to show? What are some of the advantages of QBO, things that are not in desktop, you know? And, and I'm, my thing as well, if they want to be mobile and online and you don't have to deal with file transfer and things like that, then there you go. I mean, that's kind of my swaying argument for QuickBooks Online. But this morning, I got here a little early and was going through and trying to think of things, and I had my desktop product open, and I had QBO Plus open. So I was just kind of picking away, and I got this list, which I have tweeted. If you want to follow me, at QB Clay. I throw out a lot of content, and I retweet a lot of Hector's content and vice versa. So, uh, at QB Clay, which makes absolutely no sense, and I'm not going to explain it because we don't have enough time for that, But because uh, my name is Woody. But anyway, so I've been going through all of these lists of things that actually QBO does better. So, I'm going to start showing some, but they're small things to also maybe some larger uh, things with particularly the automation with transactions. But the list is getting longer. Leon's getting larger. If you guys, uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, Airplane, remember that quote? So um, we're going to go and look at a few of these things. If, you know, Hector's got a lot to go to, Qbox and, and the other stuff, as well as desktop. So I probably only got about 15 minutes or so. So I'm going to just quickly go through them at a high level. And then I will hang out uh, while Hector's going, and, and if Hector wants to give me the organizer privileges, I'm happy to take on the Q&A all the way up till 12 Central. So just let me know. Okay, well, um, I, made that. You, I made you organizer, and we, we nice. still can't see the screen. Oh, now we can. Okay. Oh, how about now? Yep. Good? Got it. Okay. And no one else has a trial like mine, 1,765 days for free. Um, so a little thing, just on the home page, even though I know you can kind of hide balances on the, the home page and desktop, it's really easy to toggle it on and off within QBO. Now I'm in through QBOA, but none of the stuff I'm showing you today is actually just for accountants. If you're here as a small business owner, you're not an accountant or don't have one, I would encourage you to get a pro advisor like Hector or Michelle or several other people that are, that are here in the audience today, because I, I believe that someone's QuickBooks is always going to be infinitely better if you have a pro advisor. So, um, I'm in through QBOA. That's why you see the QB accountant in the upper left. That being said, the stuff I'm showing you, you know, the private mode or Starbucks mode as we call it internally, that's for everybody. Also, the mobile app. I can't show you that. Uh, i got to figure out that arrow thing but um, to show the phone. But you can down once you have a QuickBooks Online subscription, you can download QuickBooks. You just go to the App Store and search QuickBooks, download it. It doesn't have all the features, right? But you can see a P&L balance sheet, the items list, chart of accounts. You can do some sales transactions in one expense transaction. You can take a picture, and it'll send it in with the picture attached, um, as well as you can now do online banking on the phone. Auto send transactions. So if I go to the gear icon, recurring transactions. Now, for those of you desktop champions, that is, this is memorized transactions, right? Nearly similar in functionality. Um, but the ability, if I drill into this invoice here and click edit, you have the option to automatically send the email on both invoices or sales receipts. And so in desktop, I still have to go to file send forms, right? Or click send from the top icon bar of the invoice or the sales receipt. The other thing I like is the ability to include unbilled charges. So if I have, to, and, and that goes to a delayed charge form, which I'll show as well, a delayed credit. If I have any of that or any time material expense that's tagged to a customer and I have this recurring invoice set to go every month, right, then that invoice is going to pick up any unbilled charges. Though I think that's cool, it's important that if your client is just, wants to be able to control what time material expense goes to an invoice from the drawer, um, and I think we can show that from an invoice uh, a little bit later, you know, you don't want to check this box, right? So you know your client, which you do, and, and are they going to be able to, uh, to handle that? You know, along with the uh, auto send transactions, there is a really cool report that I could not find in desktop for the similar thing. You, know, you have the memorized report list, but in, um, and it's actually an accountant report, though I'm not sure why, recent automatic transactions. So this will be all your transactions that were created automatically, whether they're delayed charges, bills, checks, whatever, recurring transactions. So, and, and what people will do is they'll customize this report 
And if you save the customization, let's just say, and I have one transaction there, but let's say you save the customizations and we'll call it, you know, um, what is this, uh, weekly, okay? Like this is what Stacy does. She actually will add it to a group, as you guys I'm sure you can know. You add it to a group and that's part of like, quote unquote, memorizing the report. And then I have my custom reports. Now I can actually then set this or just add it to its own group if you want, because this, I'm going to schedule it to auto send. So auto send transactions, but I can also auto send report groups or my custom report groups. So also though desktop has the ability to process multiple reports and, and this year we added the functionality in desktop, be sure you see it, where you can uh, batch send reports, right? There's a column to check off other things, other reports, not just one. But you still have to initiate the event, the happening, right? It going out of desktop. In QBO, I can schedule it, the group, and you schedule the actual group, and I can set it to go out to anybody, and it's a similar intervals to transactions, right? So you just choose weekly or whatever, and then they'll get their, all the transactions that were automatically entered uh, in QBO. So uh, desktop doesn't have that visibility, so I wanted to, to mention that as well. Now, there's also another thing in settings regarding automation of unbuilt activity. If you go to the advanced tab, there is this automation here. And it's really automatically invoice unbuild activity. Again, this is if this is turned on, and, and this is one you have to think of, do I really want this turned on or not? Because my client, you know, in, in this case, any kind of unbuild activity, whether it's delayed charges or where I've been on, let me duplicate, let me just kind of give an idea so I'm not just theorizing so much. Like, let's say I had, you know, a delayed charge Oh, one other thing I like better than desktop, the clock in the upper left of any transaction, this actually does what the previous button in desktop never did. It actually works, right? You ever on a transaction in desktop and click previous and it goes to like a transaction from 2003? Yeah, exactly. There's no rhyme or reason. It's a rogue feature in desktop, the previous next button. Um, anyway, recent transactions will take me to the last 10 and then you can run a report. You know, it brings you basically to like the list report for all transactions where you can filter. So this delayed charge is tagged to, um, you know, this customer, that's going to go to the invoice, you know, and, and if I have this, this setting set, an invoice is going to be created, you know, every week, let's say, and it's going to pick up any delayed charges plus any kind of expense or bill or credit card expense or journal entry that I tag to the customer. It's just going to dump it on the invoice. So it's important to know, do you really want that? And that goes for saying for automatically apply credits and bills, which, which desktop has to, those two preferences. But, you know, do you really want them turned on? Okay. So I wanted to point out that. Now, um, that's pretty much for it for automation. Let's quickly go to bank feeds. I'm going to click done here. And a couple things that I want to show in bank feeds and and Hector reminded me of this. And he was correct in saying that, no, I don't know everything about QuickBooks. It, it, maybe I did at one point. No, even when I thought I did, I didn't. But now that I'm older and wiser, I know I know less than I thought. And so I, you know, I, I actually look up to Hector for that uh, in that respect and what Michelle are doing. So he reminded me about this. And, and desktop has bank feeds, has online banking and that kind of stuff. However, there's a couple things that QBO bank feeds does that desktop doesn't. When you add a bunch of transactions to, you know, the register, right? Everything's green, it's matched, I'm just going to accept selected, you know, and, and, and desktop can do that too. But when you go into quick, in this in QuickBooks tab, see, I love how, see, de desktop online banking doesn't do this. It doesn't break it out. It's just a transaction list, right? And if you accept them, even in batch, what if I did them wrong? Well, now I can undo here without going to the register and deleting them. I just click batch, undo, and that's going to bring them out of the register back into the new transaction field. Okay, and there's my five back under recognize. Why they're recognized? Because, well, I have some rules applied and, and some matching going on. But, you know, rules are there in desktop too. The other thing, though, QBO does better than desktop for rules is that when I, let's go into a rule here, you can do a split by percent. So let's say I have this rule here for Big B, whatever it is. Stacy probably created this one. And it's, uh, we'll pretend it's like a check, okay? I can do a split by percent. So I could do, you know, percent's going to be 50 going to this account and 50 going to another. That is not something that desktop can do. Um, you can add rules, but you can't split it out by accounts. 
Also, what else can I do here? I can set a default class and location. Speaking of which, and desktop can't do that in the online banking. So there you go. I like them apples. Speaking of which, though, is uh, Macintosh. Speaking of which, the location tracking, right? That is also not in desktop. It is another uh, kind of list. It's this, at the summary level of the transaction, so all the invoice, all the sales receipt, all the check, all of it, all the whole amount will go to the location. So it's another way to differentiate your P&L or even people use it for a balance sheet because we know how the balance sheet by class in QuickBooks is, is just, uh, it, it just never really worked out, right, because of source and target rules. And heck, uh, Hector and I could do a whole QB power hour on that. Um, maybe we should put it on the, on the calendar, Hector. But in, in QBO still has, has some similar source versus target. Uh, but not as rigid as desktop. So location tracking, balance sheet by location, is really an awesome balance sheet by class. And I learned that trick from Laura Redmond, so that's really cool, too, just to throw that out there as well as a tip. So location tracking would be the, the summary of an invoice. So if, if I were to go to, say, you know, a check, and we'll go to a recent check, um, like this, well, let's do one that actually, let's add some more lines. Let's do, like, one like this, and we'll see. It has other lines. Well, anyway, all the whole 14 grand will go to Texas. However, 10 grand is going to, you know, the particular class like audit, and then the other four grand is going to another account, and then, you know, so the class tracking will allow me to split it out by classes. So when I run a P&L by class, I would see it broken out, you know, 4,000 in books column, 10,000 uh, in the audit column, but the whole 14 grand is going to the summary of uh, you know the, the the location tracking and location tracking you can change the names it's also a preference so if I cancel out of here and go to um, let me go here there we go back to home here we go sorry lost my place if I go back to company settings and you go to company and then categories you know you can call category uh, location something else right there's several different terms you can use for it. So now you have this other level of class tracking, that it's the summary level. So that's important to know, like what am I going to use, class location or both? And then we have default reports for that. We might as well go to reports next because I have some things to show in reports. Um, one other thing quickly before I go, so that was the online banking benefits. Um, the reconciliation, I, I like this history window. Again, there's no discrepancy report. I mean, Hector can show you, or Stacy can show you a cool trick to, to, to run a report on the auto adjustments because it makes a, a memo of like reconcile adjustments. You can filter like transaction list by date by the memo field, you know, and, or match or whatever. I think it's called match. But I like seeing the grid and I can drill down and I can do the undo right from here when I'm in from QBOA. So that is, uh, though there's no discrepancy report, I do like the history. Uh, of seeing that history there uh, right from one window and without having to run a report. Another thing too, and Texture, just let me know on time because I've been, again, I've been all morning, I was like, hey, there's also something here. What about budgets? You can only do one budget per fiscal year in desktop. Yeah, Woody, we'll do, a, we'll do a part two. <laughs> That's cool. Let, let me know when I need to stop. But kind, kind of lame that you can only do fiscal year, one, fis, one budget fiscal year in desktop. In QBO, you can do multiples, right? So I have all of these budgets are actually 2014, right? So there's that also. Um, and then just report, Hector, and I'll, I'll end it there. Uh, redesigned reports, which you can turn on in QuickBooks Labs. There's many things actually in QuickBooks Labs. Uh, you can now Pro and Premier can't add an can't add a picture to an item. I know Enterprise can, but you can now in QB with QB Labs when, when it's turned on. There's a commerce network to have customer vendor information auto updated by the customer vendor without them pinging QuickBooks. Um, and there's several other things uh, being able to uh, that aren't in desktop, but like these reports, right? So they're going they're looking different even from desktop reports. But I can affect the logo right here. I can add endnotes right from here. Um, I click in EndNotes, and there's an ability, uh, you know, obviously just kind of customizing the report while being on the report, including if I want to filter, like you can in desktop, but I'm on the report, not in some separate window. So those are things to consider as well. And then when you're on a detail report or a transaction report, you know, if you click the little baby gear icon, you have all of these columns that I can turn on and off while being on the report instead of being on that customized window. So I think that's a little advantageous as well. Uh, versus uh, reporting in desktop. 
And then one more hector would be the um, journal entry, more than one ARAP per journal entry. And I'll end with the management reports. You can actually build a report compilation from cover, cover page down to endnotes. You know, put a default header footer without having to use Word and stuff or Statement Writer. Um, this isn't customizing reports. This is building a report package. So the, that is not in desktop. Um, and then, of course, all accountants love the more one ARAP per journal entry. And all those right. are, those are, that's enough probably, huh, because it's a yes. lot of info. But um, <laughs> a lot more than I thought, right? So Leon's getting larger. And Hector, thanks for having me, bud. Yeah, thanks a lot, Woody. By the way, thank you for leaving no time for me to talk about desktop. Uh, it's very, uh, <laughs> very, very into it of you, uh, by the way. Anyway. Uh, Woody, you obviously love uh, QBO, and you're obviously you know talking about it with a lot of conviction. Do you think everybody should move to QBO? No, Thank no. You. I think if you Thank need you. like the stuff you're going to show, but heavier inventory and job Thank costing, you. and you don't want a third-party app, you still stay on desktop, unless you want to be mobile or flexible. I love your bit of having all your service companies on QBO. I think that's genius, or nonprofits, or doctors, or dentists, or people on the go. But no, I mean, obviously, we're still investing heavily in enterprises, you know. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, exactly. sure. 